Okay, so this is James Smith. So in part one of Jam this is James Smith and Court of Orion, the elements shall melt with fervent heat. So in part one, we have gone through the linear S. <clears throat> so in part one, we discussed the core elements, meaning the stems only, uh, on how I created the track. Now, this is all the stems. So originally I'm just going to, I've done the project in Reaper because in FL Studio it take, it's completely, it's completely CPU intensive. Now, this is the new format until I can get until I make a major upgrade and the quality of these videos on both YouTube and Twitch will be improved later. So this is the new format. I'm using this in Reaper. I'm going to show you the track in Reaper as well as do this. I've already taken snapshots over the past month, over the past few weeks from the FL Studio project so I don't have to waste time. I'm only going through the harmonic content, not the effects. Although I will go through most of the effects, at <clears throat> actually some of these effects, but not all of them. So, if you're new to both YouTube and Twitch, I recommend you follow or subscribe. And like I said for YouTube, don't delay, like, subscribe, and ring that bell today because you're gonna see a major, you're gonna see a substantial growth as I would show you new tracks Right after I go through part two of all of this production of the elements shall melt with fervent heat. I'm not gonna spoil this right now, you know? I'm not going to, even if you force me to. Even if you force me to. Now, let's get, now, let the production begin. Now, now, we're first going to start with the effects on the piano. Now in part one, we discussed the effect on the piano. As I made, done a major EQ, a subtle EQ, with a little bit of reverb. For the synth, it's merely just a roll off on the bass here. Maybe, hang on, let me just close. CC cleaner. <sighs> Excuse me. And I also applied a Valhalla Room reverb on there as well with H delay. Now for the guitar, Bill Vensel's section, it's merely just a, it's just a peak and treble boost. as well as a stereo enhancer with the hollow room because you know it's a main guitar with a little bit of EQ and the treble on the second section and when the drop hits I cut out entirely of the low with an LFO tool to show it to show the valor of the side chain. And also, the violins. Because I have a substantial, both the original violins, so the track, and show the valor. Hang on for a minute. Major 7.
Let's go through the chords first. F major seven. C major seven. C. F major seven. F flat in. A minor nine. C major seven again. And then C and then F Lydian. Amazing. Now, to achieve this, it's just a subtle EQ, maybe boosting up the lows here and the treble. And I've also done an S1 Imager stereo from Waves. Another great, another great plug-in manufacturer. In which the Grand Rhapsody piano I used on this track was. Now for the Valhalla room, this is where you get your reverb. I have the mix for 40.8. I have the mix set to 40.8, the decay to almost 12.5, 12.48 and the high cut so there's no dissonance within the lows just to say These are the violins I'm, I'm these are the violins that I'm talking about. A major seven. C major seven. C major. F major seven. F major nine, I mean. F Lydian to F major. A, A, A minor nine to A minor. A minor seven to C major seven to C. And an F major seven to F to F Melidian. Back to F major seven and an F major. They're both alternating, so real good stuff there. <laughs> now for the violins orchestra. Now, before we get into the violins orchestra, the violins are made up of contact of the falling in of these instruments. Symphobia 2, the string sustain, Orchestral Essentials 2, from Pro both by Project Sam, and East West strings. Now, Symphobia 2 and East West Studios strings, they're all panned left and right, but I added some certain effects. But I all drifted it. But I all panned it. <clears throat> but I panned it. <clears throat> However, I panned it all to the left. Excuse my congestion. Now, let's get to the violins orchestra. Mainly the same chords as the violins, as it's an Omnisphere patch, Omnisphere 2. The patch name is Lush Ambient String Orchestra. I've turned up the cutoff and minim and turned down the amp on the second preset the second sound source, which is 
the ambient strings I turned I turned the volume down which is the amp which is mostly the gain knob the gain slider and for this violins orchestra you get something like this the Valor F major 7 C major 7 C F F major 9 F Lydian F A minor 9 to A major 7 actually A minor 7 and an A minor C major 7 to C F Lydian to F major great stuff great stuff there Now for the violins orchestra, I've done a substantial rise in as you move up the EQ, mostly starting in the mids. Just a treble boost would do, and I made certain attenuation in the b bass, but not too much to overshadow the sub bass. Now. Just like the contact strings from both Symphobia 2, Orchestral Essentials 2, and East West Quantum Leap Silver Edition. I pant, and yes, these are already instruments that I own. <laughs> these are instruments that I already own. I made a substan. I panned the Omnispear strings to the right channel with S1 imager with Waves S1 another imager a lot of my tracks on that one a lot of my tracks on that one and then for Violin's Orchestra and now <coughs> for the Violin's I also have the mix on 20% and all the rest are the same with the previous violins. All violins orchestra right there. Great stuff. I'll be back to get I'll be back to get my water bottle. It's just give me a few seconds. <clears throat> okay, now we're back. On my water. And also stay hydrated, guys. Because we're about to dig deep into the. Because we're about to go in. Into loads of this project. Okay, let me just set a mi Okay, let me just add a limiter into this. <clears throat> now let me just add a limiter to this. So I don't you know give anyone so I don't make anyone deaf on this one. This ain't this is not ear rape. This is a music production tutorial. In if, even if you force it to become this way you know pretty much how almost every meme goes at this point totally just a waste of time in this deal now let, uh, let's just continue 
Back to the project. More info on this one. More info on this. Jams to the Council's radio show. Coming in a few. Now. I was meant to do the project on part three. Right, hour three. Right after the Jams to the Council's episode on September 18th. Just six days ago. But uh, yeah. That that plan and surprise that plan foiled. Now let's get back to the project. This is the sub base. Before we get into the sub base, let's just get into the pad. As it's another harmonic content, as it's more of that harmonic content, I'll explain the chords as I go. I'll explain the chords and the tech techniques that I've used. Now let's go. D minor seven. F major seven. All diatonic to C major. And I'm back to D minor seven. Beautiful. I know. And then F major seven. And then cut off here on the two pre drop. And have a little side chain here. A minor over C. C major 7 to C, F major 9 to F major 7, and then F, and the Floridian, F, and then instead, and then instead of D minor, <clears throat> so instead of A minor, just like in the break, we go into D minor 7. And then hold on there for four bars, and then transition back to F major 7. Amazing. I know. This is the pad what I'm talking about. And then cut off for the pre drop. Let's go! Man. Amazing. Hang on. So for the pad, I've done a sub I've done a major low cut in this one. With leaving only the mid some of the low mid, the mid, and only the pick, <clears throat> only the peak, not the highs, with a little bit of flange, with a little bit of flange on it from Fruity Flanges, 
I've used a classic preset and tweaked the and tweaked the order slider just to make it more of a flange here and then used waves s1 to you, you know, again just increasing the width not to not to spe something special here with a little bit of a hollow room just the same preset I have on the violins orchestra and sidechain when we hit the drop now for the Valor Arp now for the Valor Arp now brace yourselves this is going to get atmospheric let's go D minor 7 F major 7 and back to D minor 7 same with the pad same with the pad let's go A minor over C C major 7 C F major 7 and then F major 9 to F major and then F Lydian to F D minor 7 and it holds on it for the f next 4 bars and then F major 7 I know you heard that effect right that auto pan though amazing this is how complex this track is this is how on this is how undeniably complex this track is and this is what you have with styles like it Okay, now for the sn so how do I achieve that sound so how do I achieve that sound well you guessed it just a rise in just a rise in the EQ which is the bass all the way to the treble when we get to the treble Again, a low cut so that the frequencies don't even, you know, become a huge hum, you know, a huge, the low sub frequencies don't clash, clash like they're, they're at a war, like they don't clash, like they don't clash, like they're at war. Just keep an even deal. And yes, a camel crusher with the pre British clean preset with the master volume turned down just a little bit with a little bit of distortion, but not too much. And an OTT from X and an OTT used to boost the highs and the mids to give that atmospheric taste. With a little bit of the low, with a little bit of the in and out gain turned up as well. Great stuff going there. And then the LFO tool. Usually this is used for shot. <clears throat> Usually this is used for side chain, but this one, however, is used for a one eighth arp. This is used for one eighth arp. Because if it did, because this is to remove any of the sustain and release. Because if it didn't, it'll just be your standard ARP. Another technique to use with your ARPs or your plucks, have a little space in the end, which is rem turn down. If you have Silent Nexus, um, if you have silent nexus spire uh 
vital, or whatever sense you have, or massive, or vital, or whatever sense you have, turn down the release. Turn down the release all the way. And then when you go into your piano roll, select all your notes and then take the release, which is the end of that note, and then drag it back. And then drag it back, but only just a little to give it that same taste that I have in some of my tracks. And we're gonna get into that. We're gonna get into more of the, the info of those tracks later, okay? Now for the stereo enhancer. You know, Waves S1, as usual, real valid there, and Nature Delay, which is a Waves hybrid line. Set the ping pong, yep, just a simple ping pong delay with the dry wet knob turned to around 10 o'clock and the feedback turned all the way down so it doesn't get, so it doesn't over clap, so it doesn't jam the frequencies up. And I've also turned it to half time. So delay is just like, it's just like, Boom. So for the difference between, and I bet we've all, if you've been a music producer, you should already know this. This is the difference between just one eighth, one, eighth, one fourth, and a half delay. This is one, this is one fourth. This is one eighth. And this is one half. Like that. And this is, and again, more of a hollow room. There's a difference. For for the mix is 40.4, 404, error 404, you know, and decay, which is 12.48. Almost halfway, but you get it. And the reverb mode that I use is Bright Room, and the preset that I have for myself, which is 20% mix, and all the rest of the presets are the same. The preset name is the Real Valor Verb. I use that. I've done this preset back in 2018. And man, it is great. It is ultimately great. I can tell you, a real crowd pleaser in everyone's sets, just like mine. Now let's get to the side chain for when that drop hits. I don't have. Just enough for the kick. Set it up to here. And yeah, you kind of get the idea. And yeah. And yeah, you kind of get the idea. Now, what's next? Next, we have the Sunny Resonance. Now note this, this is only a preset. <clears throat> this is only a, a sample from Lania Kia Sounds Electric Atmospheric Effects 2. No, not electric. Ele not electric. Elements Atmospheric Effects. And this is what it sounds like. Just a just a C major sixth, but I pitched it to great to great expectation, the valor of great expectation. Now, let's get it, the valor.
that's just a drone now if you hear it in now if you tuned into jams of the counters for the past few weeks you hear that same resonance that i used in james smith versus pogo she grants you goodbye another track going to master universe 20 years of Allah chapter 5 but that's a story for another but that's a track for another event for another episode and also tune in for another renaissance episode coming this saturday I bet Major Valor will be confirmed there. Now for the Sunny Resonance, I've turned up the bass. But cut out more of the mid because I don't want it piercing, over piercing. I don't want this to over pierce. Now for the Valhalla Room, this is the preset that I use. Just in its sta the standard preset. The reverb, mo the mix is bright. The plugin is the hollow room. The mix is 20%. The pre delay is zero. The decay is 20. The decay is 20. <clears throat> the decay is 12.48. The high cut is 12 grand hertz, 12k hertz, and the depth is 100%. The remote, the reverb mode is bright room, and the preset. Is the real valor verb. Now for the side chain on the LFO tool. Now I you notice that I've left the volume on this curve a little bit up, so we have some room for the kick. Now for the vocal atmosphere. Let's see if there's more elements to do for the and now I done variations in the drop and to and cut out only parts parts of the sunny resonance Now, when this is the drop, and now I have side chain, you can see it in effect starting here. That's when the F major chord comes along. And then to make it atmospheric, this is why this is what you get when you mix ambient guitar and progressive house. Real valor now, isn't it? This is the vocal atmospheres. So I have it in F and I shifted it to E minor. So the vocal atmosphere is in F minor and I shifted it to E minor. Just another C major chord. You know, probably E over C or C over E. You know? This is what it gives the atmospheric deal. Real valor, isn't it? And I loop it. Yep, I produced this in FL Studio. I'm just showing it in Reaper, so it's not that CPU intensive. So how do I achieve this? Just simple. Just another EQ with the cutoff lows, boosted mids. It's the same thing with the Sunny Resonance sample. And not too much on the trebles. And again, the standard preset on the hollow room, 
just a real valor verb, as I would call it, real courage, and that's it. That's only present in the break. Now for the drop sub bass. But before we get into this, we're just gonna do this drop sub. We're just gonna do the normal sub bass. Now if you have headphones in. Note if you have headphone. <clears throat> note if you have headphones in, you should be able to hear this perfectly. Do not. I recommend you listen to this on a s different. I recommend listen on this bass on a decent set of headphones or speakers. Phone speakers are not going to comply. Just using this on a mobile phone is not going to help with the headphone jack, you know, vacant. Now let's get to the sub bass. Now note that I don't hit that C up an octave on the sub bass. I wanted to have that cinematic, that cinematic type taste. I wanted to have that cinematic type feel that you get, not what you get constantly from EDM because you know some fool just incorporated some idiot just composed 1456 in chords 1456 minor but I'm here to evolve I'm here to change this so EDM so, so dance music will not be just like you see in everything. Now let's get to the sub bass. I'll explain the I'll explain the intervals. F, C, low C, then back to F. A C and F just a simple silent bass, bass patch when I go in init the init preset and then change the first oscillator to a sine wave to a sine wave and pitch it down an octave you hardly hear the bass in there but you get the idea now this is a low cut this is a high cut high mid and high cut and to make the bass have more weight to give it a little bit more presence I have a camel crusher and I turn the tube distortion up <laughs> next Next is the side chain. You know, just have the side chain halfway when the kick is playing. When the kick is stopping, the sub bass is starting. Usually you're calling response. And then your drop bass. Now this is where, and now this is where we get into the drop. But before we get, but before we get into this, let's do the percussion.
First thing I'd like to touch upon are the kick and clap. Is the kick. Nothing to just to ground the valor melt. Just to ground the valor rhythm, right? And I add a top kick to give it a little more presence. And together they're all like this. Now for the ride loop. Which is just an EQ, which is just parametric EQ with the Haas effect, with the stereo enhancer, and the claps. And the claps. I stated that I'm not going to get into, you know, effects based samples, effect samples, but this time, for this one, this doesn't rule out percussion. This is the clap. Actually, that's the snare. This is the clap. Yeah. Now, for this clap, I apply the same... I done a low cut, same with the other clap right here, with the Haas effect. And for the snare. I made random and stuff there, and I also add a percussion loop. Most of these loops are from Vengeance and EDM Essentials 2. Come on. Now I know now you notice that I have made it into a glitch sample. A glitch loop. That's why I've applied Effectrix. I've applied Effectrix on it. And I don't need, probably I don't need to show you the preset, but you can make your own loops in there. So it's not just the standard. The same EDM loops time and again of what we've seen in EDM. Now all together, they sound like this. Choom, choom, choom. Amazing. Just to make sure that the first drop, just to make sure that the first eight bars aren't repetitive. Now we're not gonna focus on the down filter and now we're not gonna focus on these impacts and the up filters and the sweeps there. But I will focus on the drop bass, which is just a drop, which is just a silent patch. And I'm just gonna do the now, I'm just gonna do, but before we get into that, this is the snare build up. Now, I increase the reverb. Now, 
I increased the reverb a little on this section here on the second part of that snare build and a little reverb added too and then have the volume levels drop instantly when we reach the first two drop when we reach the first two and I had a kick in here at, to ground the snare build and it sounds like this note that this is a shorter kick and I have it and I have the aut volume automation there let's see both of them together now let's see both of them at the same time let's go Now you notice in the snare, it's not exactly on the grit. It's not exactly on beat. That's because I mix in polymeter, a little bit of three, four and four, four in the drop build, <clears throat> in the snare build. Let's listen with metronome to see how it is. I'm gonna turn it down to make it more obvious, to make it more apparent. Okay, let's. Okay, let's. Let's do a hard start. Hang on. Let's mute, let's mute that. Wait, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, one, four. You see, you heard how it slipped out. You heard how it shifted to three, four, throwing you off, throwing you off the current beat for a second, as if you think in your mind that Oh, it's gonna top. Oh no, the snit. Oh crud, the snare is gonna topple through. Well, you thought wrong. Hang on. And it stopped there to make that, to pull off the illusion even more, you know, more present. To make that illusion more present. Now, Back to the drop bass before we get into the drop lead. Just a simple silent preset. No, no, this project was rushed. Now, some parts of this project were rushed. That's why I only have like one drop bass instead of two drop basses, minus the drop sub bass. Not including that. Now let's get into the drop bass. C. A. F. D. F. Amazing. Now I used, yet again, a low cut, but not a substantial low cut. Just having some because it's the drop bass. And have more of the mid increased to give it a little bit more grit and a little bit of the treble to make the grit more present. Now for the Camel Crusher. This one is set to annihilate. With the tube turned a little bit up. 
with all the others stayed the same and the OTT I have a little bit of the high switched up a little with the out gain turned down to 1.5 to negative 1.5 dB and another LFO tool which is less severe than the drop sub bass since I wanted to give it a little bit more weight and for the claps and snares I've already mentioned that I had a uh, low cut there up to the low and mid range leaving the pre leaving the peak in treble and also the stereo and with the stereo enhancer as well the stereo enhancer we all know that well, that's the Haas effect some great tips to have ear candy there now we get to one of the more atmos the most atmospheric of all the drop lead the main element in progressive house let's give it up okay okay let's go now let's for the okay now for the drop lead let's hear it let's hear this it's alter and it's the same chords as the piano so yeah same chords and that's the same case on some of my other tracks as well so I don't have to waste time so I don't have to waste time creating a new melody that's why some of the projects feel a little bit rushed now let's hear the drop lead note that this one's in note that we have loads to go through we have a lot to get through and this drop lead This is the drop lead. Now this is the drop lead that will, that, you know, that's not that, that has everything, including the sustain and the, <clears throat> not the sustain, but the release turned off, which brings about the, drop leads return more on that one later now let's take a look at the drop lead turn it down for a second let's go just to give it a little bit more of that atmospheric taste and have the volume cut on the pre-drop for two bars. Let's go! Doom, 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 doom. Hey, 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 hey. Now you know I have the notes displaced and not a little bit and not as quantized. And another thing to note in my that's another thing to note in some of my tracks. I shouldn't have to go through straightaway notes right on the grid. That's too EDM-ish. I want this to 
have a I want this track as well as many other of my tracks to have specific tastes. Now, how do I achieve? Now, this is starting on bar 33 through 46. This is a low cut filter. More than that right now as I go through the effects. Now, for this one, this was a mixer chain that I have. Now, before I get into the effects, this drop lead, these drop leads, Now, before I get into any of these effects, the drop leads and the drop re lead return, you know, that trance-like effect, these one have two, the, both of them have unique mixer chains. One is FabFilter Pro Q2. Now, first, we're going to take a look at the drop lead mixer chain. But first, let, first, let's focus on the drop lead mixer chain solo. The first effect is a fail is the fail filter Pro Q2 with, you know, a little bit on the low mids and certain frequencies on the mids are taken out. I see, and the peak and the treble has been turned up so that the drop leads will remain you know, present in the mix. And the Camel Crusher, just a British clean preset and a master channel with the master channel set to three o'clock on the volume. The OTT, which has negative, which on the end, which on the mid to high frequencies they're at the same position with the low turned down a little more detail on that just a little just to give it a little more detail and then for the in gain it's negative 0 0.8 db and the out gain negative 4 negative 0.4 db and then another, hang on. This is where I keep all of my snapshots here. This is where I keep all of my snapshots here. That's only half one. Now let's get into more of the snapshot screenshots here, which is here. Let me drag them. Let me drag all these to the folder. I mean, this should have been a waste of time to begin with. Okay, let's let's do this. Let's try this. And also I transposed this up from A minor to C major. So it's the relative major. So I'm playing with, I'm mostly playing with relative major and minor. Loads of music theory in this one instead of your straight away, you know, chords.
Now let's get into drop leads EQ2. Okay. Hang on. Darn it. Let's just go into drop leads EQ2. Now, for the base, I have it cut off for the sub. And for the base, it's somewhat questionable with hmm, a little bit of the base, but not too much. And the mid through hot peaks and treble are also a little bit risen, raised up, so it gives it that more presence in the mix. I have the S1 imager there on that snap on that shot, but I like but I caught it too early. But it's mostly just whiffed around 1.6 steep percent but the width is wonder but the width is 1.60 percent and for the drop lead it opens now to give now this is unique I have it's the same technique that I apply on the Vala Arp or the Plux that I use in this mix however it is a different that it is a different the order, the deal has been switched for when we go into the LFO tool. Yes, this is your sidechain, but the release is cuts off just moments, not right away when the first kick hits. This is the thing, this is what you get when you have sidechain compression. When the kick comes in, when the kick enters, it just ducks the other signal. When you, you route the kick to another, when you route the kick to another sub bass bass lead, pluck, arp, or other element, or other element. However, for this LFO tool instance, I have the drop lead just barely ducking when the kick enters I have the drop lead ducking just seconds before the kick comes b just so I have the drop lead cutting out just milliseconds before the kick and re-enters and this is what's driving the cut off in the build to give it more of that atmospheric flavor alongside the pad sunny resonance and the vocal atmosphere samples with the Vala Arp now for the return let me solo it. Now let's play the drop lead with return because this is what gives it its reverb. And this is the second mixer state that I was saying here.
Now for the drop lead return, you might say. I'm gonna solo it to make it more apparent, to make it more present. It's merely just routing the drop lead to another mic to a return channel. So it's just mic so it's merely so it's mainly just sending the drop lead, the send to a return channel. I'm calling buses channels so you can get the point here. The drop lead returns turn follow these principles principles um on the effects just have a simple Valhalla reverb you know the same mix as in the you know violins and now we have a new one Fab Filter Pro C2. And I set the control to external sidechain because we are sending the drop lead to the drop return. The drop leads return. And I set the threshold to around 7 o'clock to almost 60, negative 60 dB. And the ratio up to 30, almost like. 61 and have the fast attack there and a fast release so that you'll hear so that you'll hear the effect that pumping effect on the reverb not on the, that pumping effect so it's not just a side chain compression that is another prominent trick I use in some of my tracks and also I turn down the wet signal I turn down the auto the gain knob to make sure that it doesn't corrupt alongside the drop leads next is an EQ rem next is a low is a low cut leaving only the low mid the mid, the high mid, the peaks, and the treble. No need to boost the treble because it will just be, you know, just ear piercing. Ear piercing. And I've done the same job for the side chain on the LFO tool. Just the same with the drop lead mixer state. But having the but having the However, having re the release cut just milliseconds before the kick re-enters. Now you know, now you know, when we enter in drop, now we when we re-enter in break two, we get this. Yep, you get the idea. You get the idea. This valor is now ablaze. Hang on. That valor has been set ablaze. Now you notice with the re return signal. Now you re now you notice with the return signal. It'll just ring on. It has no lead signal to contain. To you know, dr drive it downwards. as in this section would. 
Hang on. As in this section would. There's little to no side chain on this drop leads return, as you can hear if you have headphones in. Now for this one, there is no drop lead to silence the reverb to minimize the reverb volume. So it will just ring out like this. It will just persist on. Note that I added a volume automation rising up in the rising from its default volume of 80% up to around 100% and then dropping again to like 20% when you approach in bar 66 and then dropping a, a little bit again in bar 67. Let's hear that. and then fades out incrementally. And then for the guitar, the fate is sealed. <laughs> Valor, yeah. That's all of the harmonic content that I'm covering for the elements shall melt with fervent heat. And if you listen to the full track on SoundCloud, you should already know what the effects are. Now, if you listen to part one, the, now if you have part one, I'm just gonna go over for those who didn't view the video on YouTube on how I produced the track. You notice that I've, I've covered this in, I covered this only for from the stems and the piano. The core stems from Chords of Ryan's page and my pet and my piano. Now this is the drums. This is just the drop. This is just the the fills. And then then the drums vary with the toms mostly dominating, mostly being with the toms being mostly present in the mix. Let's hear this, let's hear that. This is, this is where the drums enter. And the kick is laid back too. And I add, and I increase the reverb right on the that kick. You know, just to give it a little bit more color here. Now you noticed the drop, the drop arps, kind of the drop arps on the second build are kind of silent are kind of not as present. That's why I have variation. And this is what variation is all about or instrumentation. It is to remove some away. So it's not just the same ones time and again. So it's not just the same elements time and again.
and also the drop and also the drum fills are present here but a little more loud but a little more you know louder like that now you hear the drop end this is the outro here and valley air guitar as it's just playing a minor pentatonic As, as as Court of Orion makes this ultimate crescendo of the whammy bar listen to make sure that it's not be diminished over C I have the reverb cut here Yes, I know music theory, and I also have loads of year, loads of years in, of ear training as well, and are able and is able to pull off musical illu some certain illusions that you that you don't expect often. Now, now, as we finally present to you, now as I sent this track, <laughs> I was, you know, skeptical if Courts of Orion will play the drop. But this is James, but this is Courts of Orion. Yes, he studied EDM, but Bill Vensel don't need to play the drop. And I'm totally cool. <laughs> and I'm totally cool with that, man. Totally cool. I'm totally fine. You'll get to hear the drop on the SoundCloud and the other elements too. I mean, you don't need Chords of Orion yourself to play it for you. He only played a minute as with every other pe person who participated as with every other artist who participated in the remix war. Now, this is the full track with the el with the certain impacts that I've not mentioned that I've not mentioned in here for good reason. The reason will come after this track that has been played as I finally bring to you as I come and now as I play James Synth and Chords of Orion, the elements shall melt with fervent heat.
That's all for James and the Count. That's all for James and the Counters. And if you want more elements, and if you want more Valor EDM music like this, we have a special deal for you. We have a special deal for you. I've been more active on, the Valor Man has been more active on Mixcloud lately. And now, you can see the new music I've showcased in this episode of Jam of Jams to the Counters. To listen to more of this episode, go into Mixcloud, where you could you where you will see more stories behind all of my previous albums as well as new info on this renaissance and we and I can tell you it's about to be valor in here so don't be afraid be valor that's what life is about courage and also Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and all other, and check out more tracks like this on SoundCloud and Bandcamp. And stay tuned, I'll be active on Spotify. I will be active on Spotify. Where you will get to hear more of James of the Counters. James of the Counters is the official radio show hosted by James Synth. This is the official radio show. <clears throat> James of the Counters is the official radio show hosted by James Synth. This is the official radio show slash podcast. This is the official radio show, podcast, tour series, and online series covering the weekly courage music and support for the new producers. And also, be on the lookout for any new music as a segment called, as the segment is called the here first ideas the tracks which are the most energetic or the most trending track or the most trending track is called the master plan song and the james of the counters guest mix is also hosting new talent for the new producers and djs note all the other producers slash djs i made up are just fake names well not all of them do not count them as real producers and DJs. The, this goes for all of the sets about to be released on the SBSY Records YouTube channel. Check the YouTube bio for more. These aliases are just me, but constitutes many of the styles I produce. The only real producers outside of me are my older brother, which is Bernard Jr., aka. DJ's Game 64, Military Outlaw in a Position, and my father, Bernard Sr., Zantia Freeman, and Zalius Freeman. All three formed the group. The Super Diverse Ver. All three formed the group. Formerly the Space Diverse Supernaturals, the Super Diverse Valamin. Other groups, which is me and BJ, are Mario Sonic Line. And with BJ and Dad, the true which is Bernard Sr., the True Brave, uh, True Brave and Upliftance. Second note, the majority of the episodes that I just uploaded before the Renaissance episodes, as well as the events, podcasts, and music that you hear were just events from 2015 through 2020. Do not, and I repeat, do not count them as 2021 current events. For more info,